What up, Eric Code 459? It's your boy, Coach B. I'm here with my co-host, Coach CB. What's up, CB? What's up, Coach? How you doing? Man, I'm fired up, man. I'm fired up. I'm super excited about a special guest we got in the house. Come uh, highly recommended from one of our guys. But before we get to her, let's thank some people. Man, we want to give a shout out to East Bay, in-house Inc. and J Made Crafts. They've done a great job getting our logo together. And George Frost has done a wonderful job helping us get our, our logo on some Nike and Jordan apparel. So if you want to go ahead and get some of that, check out our store. The link is down below. Um, we couldn't have done this without friends and family. Also, don't want to forget them and all of their support that is much needed. And then most importantly, God for giving our, us the vision for Area Code 459. Man, that's right. We got a special episode. It's a Topic Tuesday around admiration to inspiration. But before we introduce the admiration to inspiration, go ahead and introduce our guest. I'm so excited, so excited to bring to you our guest today. She was born in Philly, but raised in New Jersey attended the University of Virginia where she played for the women's basketball team. There she became the career assist leader for the ACC with 785 assists. This record also was previously held by Don Staley, so it's even more prestigious because Don was a really good player. And then she led her team to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament appearances, was a thousand point score upon graduation. She was named two times to the all ACC third team. The only woman in the ACC to have had three three seasons of at least 200 assists or more. She was also able to win a gold medal with USA Basketball at the 2005 FIBA U19 World Championships. From there, she was drafted 29th in the overall draft with WNBA from the Sparks. After a short stint in the WNBA, she continued her career overseas um, where her pro professional career extended 11 years. She was named the 2018 Euro Cup Guard of the Year. She also helped lead her team to its first college Polish League Championship and was named the regular and postseason MVP. Having stepped aside from playing, she is now contributing to the University of Rhode Island Women's Basketball Program as an assistant coach. Let's welcome to the show Coach Sharni Norman. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing well. Thank you so much, man. That was, that was a lot right there. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Got to make sure they know who you are, Coach. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to have you. Today we're talking about admiration to inspiration. When I think of admiration, I think of a couple of words like respect and impressive. When I think of inspiration, I think of things like something that stimulates you or drives you or pushes you to be creative or cre pushes you to have creation. So admiration is when certain qualities of someone or something attracts you and then their inspiration usually comes after you admire that someone or something that they said or did for you. And then admiration leads to inspiration and inspiration constitutes admiration at some point. Coach, now that we've gone over admiration and inspiration, we decided that this episode is perfect for you. And we decided to do this um, episode because in our research, we found that you, um, to be a person that was inspired by different things in your life, and um, could you tell us about how growing up in a military family and living in different places inspired you as a person and your game? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, coming from a military family, uh, living on a military base, having to adapt to live in different countries, it gave me the foundation of hard work, right? My, my mother woke up every morning, um, had long days, sacrificed for our country, discipline, um, my mom was serious, right? You know, you always hear about like the sergeants. She wasn't one of those, but she was pretty, pretty strict, especially with education and just gave me the ability to adapt to different environments. Um, always being on the move almost every four years, we moved somewhere different. So um, 
those were, were really big qualities. And I think I was taught from an early age that nothing is given to you and you have to earn everything. So this translated to everything in my life, whether it be friendships, whether it be um, school, schoolwork, and, and definitely in my basketball career. I love that you say everything is earned, nothing is given, because it's definitely a principle that I was raised on. And, and I love that you talk about your mom, because my mom is a source of inspiration in my life. But growing up, who did you admire? And why was it important to your future self to be able to see what you could be through that person you admired when you were young? So growing up and really my whole entire life, I've always admired my grandmother. Um, she is the epitome of grace, uh, but she's extremely strong. Um, she is a, a woman of God. She is literally the sweetest, most kind hearted person um, that you would ever meet. And, you know, no matter how old I was, I mean, even to last year, you know, or during my media day, I was really, really nervous. And every time I left her or I got off the phone with her, I felt like I was the most important person in the world, mm. right? She made me feel like I could do anything. Um, and so I really realized that the power of the tongue, the way that you use your words to talk to people, you can empower them, um, especially young people. You speak life into them and you allow them to really feel confident, comfortable, and understand that someone believes in them. And I, I think I learned that mostly from her, just from feeling that love and that inspiration. Fire me up. If you're a grandma's <laughs> girl, I'm a grandma's boy, because I talk about grandma all the time. You check yeah. out some 459 episodes. I'm always talking about grandma. <laughs> yeah. She was definitely an inspiration for me. Definitely had me going, man. Graceful, strong. You talked about your military family, how it gave you that adaptability, gave you discipline. You know, it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, this strong GI Joe discipline, but, you know, enough to where you understand, like, these are the things that you have to do to be in order to be successful. Your speaking of mentors and speaking of people that you've looked up to, your coach, Debbie Ryan, had a deep appreciation for the player uh, you were. At one point, she even said you were the best true point guard in the country going into your sophomore season. How did your relationship with your head coach cultivate a different inspiration beyond high school and your long-term love for the game? Well, this is a, uh, a really, really great question. So Coach Ryan continually encouraged me. Um, she spoke, like I said, spoke life into me. She was very, very positive with me. She allowed me to make mistakes and to grow and mature, but she also held me accountable for those. And so no matter what it was, she showed me that I needed to be responsible for what it was that my actions were, or my, my decisions. Um, and so being able to make those mistakes, to grow, to mature, but knowing that you have someone in your corner that's still going to love you no matter what, but is going to sit here and say, hey, I trust you, but you have to learn from this was really, really big for me. And so it's now allowed me to kind of be that person or want to be that person for these kids. And so, you know, I'm forever grateful to Coach Ryan for, for her positivity, for her encouragement, and for just allowing me to mature into the person and player that I was. Mm. And if I can say, I think her allowing you to uh, learn from your mistakes allowed you to, to grow even farther. I heard an interview the other day and they said, if you only learn from your mistakes, then it's going to take you a long time to get where you are. But you have to learn from yours and other people's mistakes because their mistakes aren't just for them. They're for you as well. Um, but as a result of your success on the court, many people now look up to you. And I remember like growing up, uh, I didn't play basketball. I did gymnastics growing up. And I always tried to look at the girls that were older than me that did it on TV. And they were a source of inspiration. They kind of gave me um, a glimpse of what I could possibly be in the future. Mm -hmm. But because of this sense of responsibility, you know, sometimes we can lose sight of the importance of staying inspired ourselves. What yes. are some ways you help yourself stay inspired? You know, I think I stay inspired through my faith. Um, you know, when, when we're children of God, we understand that everything is a blessing. And, you know, sometimes we overlook the, the big, the, or we overlook the little things, right? But waking up is a blessing. Um, being able to walk, talk, articulate yourself, those, those things are, are blessings. And um, a big thing for me was when I tore my ACL and I couldn't walk anymore, right? I couldn't walk for a while. And I was literally envious a little bit of people who were walking and running. And so I learned even from there, I grew in my faith to understand that, take everything and say, thank you, Lord, for that, right? 
Hmm. Understand the blessings that you have. The little things are what make your big moments in life. And so appreciate every little thing that comes to you, whether it's good or bad, appreciate it, thank the Lord for it. And then you can now learn and grow from those things. Man, I need to put a seatbelt in my chair because I think I'm about to fill out. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, like, we just had a topic Tuesday where we were talking about overcoming adversity, and we we're talking about Division One volleyball player. And she told us, like, my faith was the only thing that kind of got me through it. Like, when I'm sitting here looking at other people do what I want to do and not being able to be me, I could never get back to me if I didn't believe in him. So that was such a inspiration. And then why I almost fell out of my seat. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, was she listening or, <laughs> you know, but um, no, I like the fact that, that, uh, that, that, you know, really uh, resonated and came together. I also like that you talked about like the small things. One thing I've been talking about and you ladies got to hear a little bit of my story before we recorded today. And um, I've been saying yes to myself every day in 2020, like everybody, you know, just so much is going on, disheartening people losing their lives, you know, pandemic happening economic crisis, political dismay, all these different things that's happened, so, uh, social injustice. And I'm, you know, I leverage the word yes, because I feel like just that three letter word every day pushes me to be better. Um, would you describe one of your most inspiring moments of your career as a professional athlete? Yeah, I think it's when I won my second uh, Polish league championship. CB, you kind of alluded to it before. Um, it was a couple years after I had torn my ACL and, and on the path to get to the championship game, I had to beat the organization that I used to play for that told me I would never be the same player again. And they told me I would never be good again. And so to kind of get that revenge in a way um, and to understand that it had nothing to do with me, it was all God's glory. And to come out and have you know a, a year that was just playing at such a high level, um, regular season MVP, finals MVP, winning the championship, and just being able to do that with knowing that it wasn't my strength was really one of the best, the best memories in my pro career for sure. Mm. Wow, that, that's super, that's super impactful because I had the same, I had a similar situation. Like I, I had knee surgery. I ended up having a red shirt a year when I was in college and people are like, there, there's so much potential, but nobody's seen you play. So we don't know what the heck you're going to do. Uh, we just hope that you come in, give a solid minute so our starters can come off. And I actually ended up being named second team all conference and, mm -hmm. and being ranked in the nation nationally for a three-point percentage. So, like, I understand exactly what you're going through. But there's just no feeling when you lean on the lean on the Lord and his healing and, and the blessings that come from it. But I know from reading articles and stuff that Coach Reese stated um, when, in your bio at Rhode Island that she was super lucky to hire you. And she believed that you would be a great role model and a mentor to all the student athletes that you would be working with having now stepped into the role of mentorship how have you been able to use your past experiences to make a difference in the lives of those that you get to influence well first off I'm really grateful for coach Reese not only for the opportunity but for you know the kind words and, and for trusting in me um, with our student athletes I just I remember how I felt when I was in their position um, and you know I just want to show the kids some grace the same grace that I was shown so the ability to make some, make some mistakes, have someone in your corner that is holding you accountable, showing you how to do things the right way, um, loving you, whether it's tough love or it's you know putting an arm around you and saying it's gonna be okay. So we always have really high expectations for our student athletes, right? We, we expect them to perform at a very high level in the classroom, on the court, uh, to be socially conscious, to be really good role models off the court. And, sometimes we forget that they're like young women, right? Mm. They're 17 to 22 years old. And so I just hope that I can use what I learned when I was in that position to be the, the person who I needed, the people that I had, um, and just allow them and encourage them and empower them to be their greatest self. Mm. That's such a great question. And I don't mean to take you off of, uh, off of cue here, but I'm going to alter one of my questions because I think I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. And you talked about, um, you know, these student athletes being 17 to 22, like, let's get real. They're actually young women that are going through a change. I'm going to tell you, um, I can't speak to what women go through in their lives because I'm not a woman, but I can tell you what a man goes through. And there's men that are in their fifties that still haven't got it all together yet. So, right. you know, it's like, um, you know, they're trying to figure it out. Um, 
what are some of the things when you say, um, when you say like um, tough love, but grace, could you give us an example of what that might look like? Yeah. So, you know, like on the court, right. We, we want our kids to be not perfect. We understand they're going to make mistakes, but we want them to, if they make a turnover to not pout and run back on defense. Right. Like we're like, that's mentally tough, but at the same time, they're harder on themselves than usually we are on them, right? So you get disappointed. Mm -hmm. So instead of as soon as they come into the huddle, we're screaming at them to understand that maybe, look at it from a different angle, maybe they were just disappointed in themselves. Explain to them, hey, your body language could have shown that maybe you were, you were showing that to your teammates or mm -hmm. you weren't there for them, right? Giving them a little grace. Or on a test, knowing if we had a week of hard practices, we had to travel a little bit and they didn't do well on a test. Well, instead of beating them up about it, maybe say, listen, maybe we can set up some tutoring sessions for, for you. You know, this is not what we expect here. This is not our expectations. This is not what I expect of you. You can do better. However, it happens, mm. right? It, it, it's not the end all be all. And so we just need to do better moving forward. Mm. Thank you, coach. Yep. You know, many people believe that like for to be great or extremely successful, um, that is what brings true admiration. And, you know, I think, I think it's the complete opposite. I think you can be normal, be part of the general population, but be able to impact and influence somebody's life. Um, and that's something that I, I truly believe in and I preach to everybody because I believe everybody has something of value that they can add to somebody's life. Um, but what are some ways that we can use our life to be an inspiration to others and help them be the best version of themselves every day? Well, like I alluded to earlier, you know, it's the little things in life that make a big difference, right? We're, we're not seeing celebrities and superstars and LeBron James or, you know, Candace Parkers. We don't see them every day, right? Mm -hmm. So the people that can encourage you or discourage you are the people that you see every day, mm -hmm. your neighbors, your coworkers, right? Your friends that you see every day. It's, it's those people who have the biggest impact on your life because you see them the most frequently. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, just being able to encourage and empower other people, it could be something as simple as, Hey, how are you doing? And actually listening to their answer. It could be something as simple as, Hey, you look really nice today. Or, you know, uh, giving someone a compliment that maybe you don't usually give it to. You never know what those small gestures every day can do for somebody's self-esteem can do for how they're feeling and their emotional state at that moment. And so I think that it's going to take all of us to do the little things to make a really big difference in this world. So I used to coach at the Panhandle and that's where we actually came up with 459. It was actually something that we created as a coaching staff that basically just kind of moved throughout the community and everybody knew when we were around or if we were posting something or if we had armbands on, they knew that what 459 nine men mm -hmm. and um it's just it's about little things and our biggest inspiration is love like you know we believe in love unconditionally like you know if uh you you know turn the ball over you know and you miss an assignment or you didn't do well on a test or your grades aren't where they need to be i'm going to come through with love and under and try to understand what you're going through but also push you to understand that hey you could get better hey yep. you could do this you could leverage this you can you can be the better version of yourself. Yeah. Like I said, here at Erico 459, we know uh, we use love to inspire and to breed empowerment within our community. How do you infuse your love in your program as you work with student athletes transitioning from high school to adulthood? Well, first and foremost, I show them that I care about them as young women. Um, there's the quote that, you know, players don't care how much you know till they know how much you care, right? And so I ask them how their families are. I'm very invested in their family life, in their education, in how they're doing today mentally. How are you feeling? I text them just out of the blue. Um, I'll FaceTime them just like, let me see if you were going to answer just, just to see, right? I, I'm, I try and, and engage with them off the court. Um, to know who they are, to know how to best motivate them and to know when they're not feeling well. And so I think that as I love on them that way, I then can hold them accountable because mm -hmm. they know that it's not personal. They know that it's not something that it's just for our, our gain. It's not just because I'm trying to be their coach. I'm actually trying to be there for them. And if they need something, whether it be 
I don't know, they need something basketball wise, they want to work out, they need help with school, or if they just want to talk, they want to talk about how they're feeling, their, their boyfriend, um, whatever it is that if they call, I'm going to pick up. And so I remember what it was like in that position. I remember I was around my coaches more than I was around my parents at that time, just because of how our schedule is set up. And I, I just want to be there for them. I want to be there for them, show them that I care, show them that I love them. Um, and that I'll always be here no matter if they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing and help them help steer them in the right direction. Mm. You know, everything that you just said, I've seen it. I just started coaching boys basketball at a school up here in Atlanta and, mm. and I'm very big on the relationship part of it, you know, cause growing up, I was involved in, in boys sports because I love my brother and I looked up to him and I wanted to be a part of everything that he did, <laughs> you know? And so I, boys sports became kind of my place where I found family and it's the same and it's kind of translated over into coaching now like those boys are my bro my little brothers if they're very young they're like my kids yeah you know yeah. and and just being able to establish those relationships where they know that you can call you makes the biggest difference and I think more people need to understand that like we always say relationship over transaction like the, the people the person means more than the sport means more than winning games it's developing young men and women to be confident and go out in the world and achieve everything that they want to achieve Absolutely. but and I, and I, it takes being genuine you know it takes being authentic it takes being vulnerable and being able to step outside your comfort zone and and how do you by being genuine and authentic and vulnerable how does that allow you to have a freedom to make a change in the lives of those around you versus if you are trying to fit into the mold of what people want to do with you well living in your truth allows you to be your best self, right? If, if you're not being true and authentic and genuine, then you can't give the world or those around you the best of you. And so the people who are around us deserve the best of us. They deserve the best that we have to give. They deserve our love. They deserve us to be happy because happy people make happy people, right? It, it hurt, they say hurt people, hurt people. I like to say happy people make happy people. You know, I've been blessed with a support system that has always poured into me, that has always given me comfortability and being who I was, um, whether that was goofy, whether that was a basketball player, whether that was being married to a woman, no matter what it was, they allowed me to be who I was. And I, I will always be an advocate and an outlet for, for the kids that I'm around and for the people that are close to me to be who they are genuinely, authentically. Mm. Man, that is tough. That is tough. Well, Coach, at the end of our podcast, we're getting ready to wrap up. We come to a huddle. You probably do plenty of huddles. You probably huddle up on the side, big huddle. But we always come to a time to reflect, like in a huddle. Um, and we basically call it our call to action. And we just call something to action or something that we want our um, listeners to take from our episode and, you know, put it back into their lives. So we're going to allow CB to start, and then you can take over, Coach, and then I will wrap it up. So go ahead, CB. What's your call to action today? Um, the things that I'm taking away from this episode was love tough, show grace, and use your words to empower others. Okay. My call to action is to think outside of yourself, to, to feel how other people are feeling. Even if you're having a bad day, go and still fake it till you make it, right? Make these days the best that you have because we're blessed to have them. Amen. Amen. Whew. I should have went first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to start with, uh, you know, um, a quote that coach said earlier, she said nothing is given and everything uh, and you must earn everything. Nothing is given and you must earn everything. So um, if you're looking for some inspiration or if you're admired by somebody, you can't just uh, not say anything or not try to open that relationship. I think that uh, one of the things my grandma used to say, speaking of grandma, strong and graceful, um, give me the flowers while I'm here. Um, hmm. And that was a big thing that we that we talked about. And once again, why we leverage 459 in our community, because we say, hey, we're going to give you your love while you're here. So like Coach said, nothing is given uh, and you must earn everything. So I want you to go out there and find somebody that you admire and then have a conversation with them about some of the skills that they have to leverage inspiration. So once you find that person, find some of the skills that they have. To inspire the, uh, the to inspire other people, and you use that to go inspire people. Coach, we really appreciate you once again. It's so many nuggets in such short a time. 
I mean, if I had another 40 minutes, I'd definitely rattle off another 10 questions. But we like to leave our uh, episode with our mottos. So, Coach, if there's something that you like to tell your players before they leave the gym, I'll let you start. Caitlin, you can go, and then I'll finish up. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say love each other. There's enough hate in this world. We need some love. And don't discount your value. And remember, let's get 1% better every day. Right. And I'm going to say, go find you uh, a um, purpose partner. And then the last thing I'm always going to say is, let love be the frequency because Coach B loves you. I'm out. Have a good evening, ladies. Mm -hmm.